Then a hip hop album review, Shabazz Palaces, Les Majesty. Now before we get into the review, Mike has a special announcement. On August 28th, in Atlanta, Georgia, Sebastian Palace is going to be playing The Basement. So in conjunction with uh, Speakeasy Promotions, we are doing a ticket giveaway. So make sure you go to deadandhiphop.com, look for the tab that says Shabazz Palace's giveaway, click it, sign up, do all that. If you live in the Atlanta area or if you're feeling like driving into Atlanta to see Shabazz Palaces, hey man, you don't want to pay for a ticket? How at your peoples, man? Deadandhiphop.com. You know, we got all the... Oh, god damn. Hi, hey, right? Hi, Brian. These hoes, man. These hoes ain't loyal. <laughs> Sorry, that's it really. <laughs> Shabazz Palaces, man. It's been three years um, since we reviewed a Shabazz Palace project. The first one was Black Up. And on that one, yo, I, I thought it was cool. Um, I definitely liked the production and that's the main thing I could say I like about this one. The first three, four times I listened to this, every single damn thing went over my head. I'm like, yo, what the, like, what are they talking about? Like, what, like, what is being said? I can barely hear them. And I think that that was my biggest negative about this album. Um, and, and it starts with the, the, the first track, uh, Dawn, Dawn of Luxor. I'm, I'm, I'm over here, I'm listening to it and I'm turning it up and I hear nothing but beat and I'm barely hearing the artist. And I'm like, yo, what is going on? So that really threw me off and that's the main, that's my main gripe about this. When we did Black Up, I was telling Mike way back then, like Mike, I fuck with it, I, li I, li I like the beats, they banging the whip, this, that, and the third. I just, I, just, I never got, like I, I could just, lyrically I never got it. And he was like, man, you gotta go to Rap Genius. So after my first three, four listens, and I couldn't understand anything, I went to Rap Genius to get some explanation. And once that shit was broken down in layman's terms for people like me, because I don't know if y'all get it, first time listening, oh my God, I understood everything. I didn't understand shit. I definitely needed it to be broken down for me. Because it, 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 everything that was being said was going over my head except for one. I had a breakthrough moment with Shabazz Palaces on the track motion sickness this is the first time that i listened to a shabazz palaces track that i didn't need no explanation i got it first through and i'm like all right cool so 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 i definitely that, that was definitely one of my favorite joints once i actually started digging and, and doing some research as to what the hell they were talking about forerunner foray was definitely one of my um one of the tracks that I that I that I loved about it. There's a line that says, "I'm the ISIS, weighed up on the bottom of some fly shit, process but priceless, but down there at the top I can't find shit." So I'm like, when I heard, I'm like, "What? The, I don't know what the fuck that means." So the little breakdown said, what? "Huh? What do you mean? Oh, I'm gonna break down. I, I'm gonna break down because I thought it was dope as hell. It was a picture of an iceberg flipped upside down. So essentially, that's what he's talking about when he says, "I'm the ISIS." So being the ice, and when you flip it upside down, obviously, from our perspective, the iceberg is only so big, but underneath the water is way bigger. So he's saying priceless but down there he's at the top of it so he can't find nobody else so i thought i thought that was dope i didn't i would have never i would have never known that so the top of hip-hop quote unquote the commercial shit it, it looks big from the top but really underneath which is underground hip-hop is way bigger and he's saying that he at, at the bottom of the top <laughs> so the bottom of that shit he don't see nobody so he's he's at the top of the underground so so when he said that i'm like holy fuck like that, that, that's what got me, and just reading and just looking at those lyrics, I would have never got that, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and the majority of this album is like that, and that is Shabazz Palaces. It, it, it's not something, at least for the most people, I, I, I definitely consider myself the common man, I didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't get it, I definitely need an explanation. But I do like that in their own weird way, they are talking about you know, things that's happening in commercial hip hop. You know, they're making a mockery of commercial hip hop, like on the track Cake. Um, they, they, they're also talking about, you know, social things that's happening. And they're also talking about, you know, the quote unquote G shit that happens. And, you know, what kind of code are we trying to live by and what are we really putting in these raps? You know what I'm saying? Once you actually decipher and break it down, these guys are on a whole nother level. But, it, but for me, it's not, really my my taste because it, it, it's, it just it goes over my head too much but like I said on black up the thing that I do appreciate about them is that I can listen to to it musically and just enjoy myself 
You know what I'm saying? I, I, I don't have no problems with that. I, I like the, the experimental sound because it's not, it's not too abrasive. You know what I'm saying? Especially on this project, it's definitely not abrasive. And you know, like 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 when you listen to the track um, "Down 155th" on the MC M Snorkel, like that joint was dope. And, and and the first when I first heard it, I'm like, "Yo, this is some boom bap shit that they playing," but it's still experimental. Like like it's still them. Like 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 they could take influences of a lot of different things and still make it weird and and push the envelope far. And and I really like that track. That's another standout track for me because they were giving you. The the and, and this is another one that didn't need too much explaining. You know, I kind of I kind of got it. Um, you know, they were just giving you the the the, the story of how hip hop was started in hip hop in New York, and and, and in it, you know, they, they gave you where it is now. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can sit down and listen to this, and 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 it, and it definitely the beats bump. I, 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 I mess with Shabazz Palaces, but I don't know if it's like something that I can just always, I, I don't know if I have, I, I won't have a reason to just go and listen to this whole project back again because it's not like I'm going to sit there and listen to it and get it. Like I'm going to have to sit there, listen to it on the computer and read the lyrics and decipher a whole bunch of stuff. But for what they do, this shit is dope. I like Shabazz Palaces. I think this one. I couldn't, I couldn't connect with it. You know, I even went to Rap Genius and, and read the lyrics, and I'm not doing all that research you did. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't got time for that. I guess thank you, FIFO, uh, for you know, uh, educating people that decided to go through all of the extra effort. I like Black Up and and uh, uh, some of the, the the two EPs that they dropped. You know, I, I like those projects, and you know, I commend them for not staying stagnant. And you know, abandoning that sound and saying, you know, well, that's that was that's what we did before in the past. You know, we're gonna head into a different direction. I think for me on this album, I just wasn't able to go with them. See, so you think it's because it's less jazz influence on this album, probably? Maybe I think that could be a, definitely be a factor because you know, when I think about the the album before that, um, you know, it was there, and you know, this one, you know, it wasn't. But in spite of all of that, I'm still able to adjust. And I wasn't able to kind of adjust to the different things that they were doing on this particular album. So that's what I'm saying. So that's why for me, I, I just, it just wasn't really there for me. And so now that, you know, um, FIFO has, has dropped all that knowledge, shit, you know. <laughs> you can leave him alone. I'm not, no, I'm not. No, I'm serious. No, I'm serious. Like, he, we went and did all that research. I, I'm not going to do that. This one. Didn't quite do it, so I, I just had to tap out. Just had to tap out of this one. I'm sorry. I wasn't really I wasn't really concerned with the rapping. The rapping was was, was was great to me. It was just yeah, some of the production and the spaced out interludes, I think, that was in like in that middle of the album, like track four, five, six, and seven. It was like right before like Ishmael. Right before Ishmael. And it, it was like it kinda like got off for me it's like it got off track right in the middle it, it, it got it got back up on ishmael and um down um 155th and diviner form cape and um i like mind glitch though did you like my glitch i like my glitch i like my glitch uh, and motion sickness and new black wave but for the most part it's like it was like a hit or miss album for me you know I, my other track i do like a lot too and it reminds me of some fly lotus type shit is a uh, forerunner Foray, yeah. that was that was that reminds me. If you if you listen to Fly Lotus, that 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 puts me right in that Fly Lotus type of production. But yeah, it's kind of like a. Mm, I, I, but this particular album, it didn't really. I didn't really like connect with it that good like I did with Black Up. And like I said, for me, I'm gonna say it, it was because it was like a lot of good jazz influence, and I love that genre. So when I heard that, and you know with the MC, I'm like, okay, yeah, Black Up, that's it. That that's the album for me. But this one. You know, and I appreciate them going a different route, and then because I think they said it, they was like they want to do something completely different. Because Black Up, that was they passed that, they doing something completely different. So, yeah, it didn't really grab me that much. Like I said, I think that middle part just really threw me off. Them little interludes just kind of like messed it up for me because I'm like, what, what the heck? And then they go to the next track. I'm like, that was it. And you know, I'm like, that was it. Like, what's going on here? But yeah, it was it was okay. Like I said, the production, some of it remind me of some fly loads, which I like too, but. Yeah, it's it's like really hit or miss. There's some tracks on it that I really like, and then some tracks that I was just like, nah, 
uh-uh, I ain't really feeling it that much, so. I think another thing that's cool about it is, is the way they use their 808s. I think, you know, they use their 808s a different type of way that you won't hear from a typical, I guess, southern southern boom shit or whatever. So, I, I, that's one thing I do like from the production is, like, I'm like, I'm like, damn, they using these 808s pretty creatively. It was okay, I guess. I guess it was just kind of like, eh, you know, nothing to really be like how I was with Black Up. Like, yeah, this shit was nice. Like, I love it. I love everything about it. I love musically. I love it. The MC, I love it. Musically, for this one, it was just like... <clears throat> Yeah, it's not not for me that much so I got the same feeling I got with black up but amplified like I thought this shit was great there wasn't as much jazz influence on this one which so I didn't expect you guys to really care for it they went the more ambient uh, you know soundscape ish mm -hmm. weird spacey type route I'm not gonna sit here and pretend I know what the lyrics mean or what they're about you know the majority of this shit goes straight over my head like 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 FIFO said even if I rap genius these lyrics they're still not gonna make any sense because usually rap genius has the annotations if you go to rap genius and look this shit up there's barely any annotations on this because right with certain albums rap genius is necessary so you can break down the lyrics and you can really understand what the rapper was talking about. With this album, I don't think that that's really necessary to enjoy it. You have some lyrics where they might code certain things and you have to try to figure out what they mean. Then you have those more, you know, poetic lyrics where you just kind of take what you want from them. You know, like there's certain lines that you'll hear, like, uh, meet us there, we throw in cocktails at the fur. You don't really need rap genius for that. You just take that lyric and you can kind of relate that to any, you know, rebellious, time or rebellious act going into they they come in gold that was when i really started to notice the genius of what they were doing with this album i don't think you really need to be diving so hard into lyrics yeah it's cool to try to figure them out but i think the reason that they're muffled the reason that they're kind of like not putting them in the forefront is because they don't want you to focus on one thing over something else you're not going to walk away from this album and have an over overly opinionated view on one aspect of it. You're not gonna walk away and say, man, I really like the beats, but I don't really like the rapper that much. Or I really love the rapper, but I don't really like the beats. It's one big package that's stuck together. It's all about the overall focus and feeling of this album versus one thing over another. The way that they compose these tracks, the weird time signature changes, the weird pitch changes, just the way like, if you remember They Come In Gold, the way it's, the beat just completely changes in the middle of the track and goes to something else. Yeah, they bring it back. I, barely. The thing about it is, it, it sounds so awkward, but at the same time, it sounded so perfect. Noir Romantics, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, that was another one of my favorite tracks, that super lush production. And I think his vocals fit perfectly with that track, especially when it ends and he's doing the, the touch and agree touch and agree part. It just sounds so good. Down on 155th in the MCM snorkel. I have no idea what the hell that title means and I'm not gonna try to figure it out. But all I can say is I love the way it sounds. That dark, almost industrial beat, the way he's he's rhyming, it sounds great. But my shit was cake, eat cake, eat cake. And I do think that was their way of kind of like poking fun at the kind of brainless mainstream rap. You know, I'm the purveyor of this, I forgot what he said, I'm the purveyor of this dope shit eating cake. Like, it's really silly, but it's dope as shit. And Suspicion of a Shape, that was that was definitely um, one of my favorite tracks. The really dark, almost noisy beat. Um, it sounds like something one of my favorite groups, Current 93, would do, or like um, Steven Stapleton would do. Like, it's, it's, I can see how this album would definitely not connect with hip-hop fans the way Black Up did. Black Up was more of a sound that was easier for hip-hop fans to digest. This sound, it's more ambient, it's more something that not a lot of hip-hop fans I feel would really be into. You know, so it makes sense that you guys are kind of like, oh, you know, I'm not really that into it. Because it's not, a, it's not jazzy. It's not, it's just, it's weird. And it seems like listening to the album, it gets weirder and weirder yeah. as it progresses. Yeah. And by the time you're done, there was like one track, I forget which one it was, like, drip, drip. Solemn Swears. Like that track. That track yeah, made one, no like sense. Rice. Something like Donald Duck. Uh, oh, I don't know. Yeah, was, I don't, I, Cause I didn't yeah. pay attention that hard to yeah. the lyrics. I was really just Dance listening to the, the overall grand. sound of the album. And on Solemn Swears, by the time you're done listening to it, you're like, what the fuck did I just hear? Yeah. What the fuck was that? But again, if you listen to it, 
as a whole, that track is a minute and 38. Next one's under two minutes. Next one's a minute and 35. This was definitely, to me, on some completely next level shit. And I just found it fantastic. I, I think it's great. And I can, I wish I had listened to this before I did my top <laughs> five, because this might have snuck in there. These beats, man, like just, just like Black Up to me, man, these beats bang. I love their production mainly. I listen to them mainly for their production. And I thought it was an overall good album. It's just, it's not something like I'm very gung ho about, so. I do like Shabazz Palaces. I just didn't overall care for this album because I felt disconnected to it. Um, and, and that's why I tried to listen to it as many times as I, as I, as I did because I wanted to make sure that if there was something in it that I wasn't um, getting, then I tried to make sure that I exhausted as many opportunities to get it as possible. And um, as Mike said, it really ain't shit to get. So. I like some of the songs, you know? I like some of the production and everything on there. It just as a whole, I was like, ah, man. And I like, like, I like Black Up. I like them. I, you know, I just, it went a different route. It just wasn't a route that I was really a fan of them going. But, you know, hey, it's pretty, I still listen to what they're going to come out with next or anything else just to see what route they go with the next time. But, you know, other than that, yeah, it didn't really connect with me that much. A few tracks here and there, and that's about it. The little interludes and all that other crazy stuff kind of threw me off. But it was, all right. I just love the route that experimental hip hop is going. I love that we have so many different you know, gamuts of experimental hip hop now. Like, I love this gone, it's gone from LP to, to Techno Animal, to Dialect, to Death Grips, to Moody Black. Like, it's covering so many different, different areas. Like, it's not just one thing anymore. And what I love about this album is they're showing that it's not just noise. Like, so many people that, that do experimental rap, they just insert all this weird noise stuff in there. And they're not doing that. Like, they're going more of like, like, like the, the Cabaret Voltaire route, where it's just weird, Beats. I think this album's stellar. I, mean, I love it, but I would not recommend this to your average hip-hop fan at all. Like, if we were just kicking it and you didn't know what this is, I would not tell you, hey man, go check out Shabazz Palaces. Because I wouldn't expect y'all to like, and if I did say go check it out and you came back and said this shit sucks, I'd be like, oh, okay, cool. Makes sense that you don't like this. They went a completely side route on this one. And I don't think they were, they're really expecting a lot of people to connect with it. But after listening to this, I cannot wait to see these guys live now. Because I want to see how they do this. Like, this is only two dudes from what I, what I understand. It's only two guys. So I, I think the fact that only two dudes put an album like this together is just phenomenal. And, and, and let me clear up, I'm not saying that there's no depth to the lyrics. What I'm saying is, I'm not gonna get hung up on trying to figure out what the lyrics mean. You know, there, there are plenty of lyrics that, that, you know, make sense to me, but they're not ones that I would really just like, you know, if I can't figure it out, I'm not gonna enjoy the album. You know, they're just lyrics that I listen to and I say, okay, I can relate that to something else. Like the one about E.H. Sterling, uh, forerunners and a, and a punk fist like I don't need to know exactly what he meant I can relate that to anything if I want to but yeah overall fucking great album love these guys